Hi there, I'm Danica Herrick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do a decorative painting technique called faux tortoiseshell. So first off, let me just make a little disclaimer. This is not the traditional way to do this finish. Um, I have a background in decorative painting. It was actually my first career out of college, but and along the way, I learned a ton of little tips and tricks, and one of them was using an oil stain as opposed to a latex glaze. The reason I wanna use this for this video is that it's just gonna be a lot easier for first timers. When you work with latex glaze, it's kind of challenging to kind of get the hang of. Um, I did make a sample with your basic glaze that you can buy at a big hardware store. Um, I just hated the results. It was really chunky and streaky and I, I couldn't control it. It needs extenders added to it. So I decided to kind of go back to one of my little hacks, which is using a latex, I mean, I'm sorry, a oil-based wood stain and uh, instead of a glaze. So as you can see, you just get a softer, more blurred, like watery looking finish with these. So that's what we're gonna be using. And now since we're using oil products, I need you to do a little PSA with me here. Um, I don't want anyone to have a fire. You need to dispose of your oily rags properly. So that means putting them in a metal container that's there, where they're submerged in water with an airtight lid or laying your rags out to dry outside for a couple days in a shaded area on a non-combustible surface. Please do that. I don't want anyone throwing their rags into their kitchen trash can and, and then they're gonna have a fire. So please dispose of your products properly. Anyway, let's move on and let me show you some examples of tortoise shells so you can see how different colors and different patterns happen. Before you start and with any decorative finish, I always recommend that you go onto Google and find some images that you could refer to while you're painting in case you get stuck as well. And in this case, I just wanted to show you how different, don't mind my lousy printer, it was all streaky, but see how there's, um, some of them are more sparse, some of them have like a really yellow background, orangey to more of a, like a reddish tone and some are like that really radial fanned out kind of streaky look. So just take note of that. But also this book here, The Art of Faux by Pierre Finkelstein, I've had this for years. It's one of my favorites. And he shows, um, you know, he shows this very like that kind of streaky version in a yellow as well as that more modeled version in a red. But this is a great book just to have, you know, to, when you want to like learn about other finishes like wood grains and marbles. So get yourself some images and figure out what you like and print them out and keep them on hand for a reference. All right, we're almost ready to go. Let's talk about our materials and gather them up. You're gonna need your object to paint, be it a picture frame, a box, a piece of furniture, um, and also grab some poster board to do samples on. And then as far as your base coat, you want it to be a satin finish. Do not, do not do flat or eggshell. Your glaze or stain will just absorb into that and you won't get any movement. It'll kind of be really hard to remove. So after you've got that, you're gonna to wanna to get some tape for delicate surfaces. If you have a large area, you're gonna to wanna to break that up and make it look like an inlay since tortoise shell in, in nature really only comes in small, like eight inch or smaller pieces. Now you're gonna need some brushes. This, I usually have a larger brush to apply the stain with and then some small round brushes for applying the spots. And now the most important brush is a two inch badger hair softening brush. I got this on jacksonsart.com for about $28. It's a bit pricey, but it is such a huge investment. You use this for marbling, for wood grain techniques, take care of it. It's, it does amazing things and you're not gonna be able to achieve the same results with a cheaper version. And then lastly, you're gonna need some white cotton t-shirt rags just to remove extra glaze and to clean your brushes, as well as your stain. You're gonna want an oil-based wood stain. You could use Zar, Minwax, but what I'd like you to try to do is get all of your colors from the same manufacturer. In this video, you will see that I use I use Old Master and Zar, and when I did put them together, they did some weird things and they kind of pulled apart. So try to get the same manufacturer. All right, let's do tortoise shell.
guys the finished box um, with the sample so you can kind of see difference in coloration. So these were my latex samples and I do not recommend using latex because it just gets these cruddy, it creates a different texture. It looks very um, chunky and it doesn't have that watery, really softly blended like when you use a, for example, this is the wood stains and it just, that's where I had ragged and created that texture, but here is just where I did the fanned out. It just is more smooth and pretty. Um, so play around with your wood stains, play around with different colors, play around with different techniques. Like that was the fanned out. This was doing more blobs and dots and creating, it almost gives you like a leopard, like an animal print feel. Um, and then on here, I did more of that kind. I did a combination of both actually, but just get some, oh, some poster board and just do some samples, get some different color stains and just play around with it. And most importantly, remember to let your layers dry completely like 24 hours before you start to put a new layer on top because the oil will activate what's below it if it's still wet and kind of lift it off and you'll be left with nothing. So be patient with this one. I know it's hard, but this took me about three days to get this because I had to let my first coat and then my second coat the third coat and then the polyurethane dry.